Here it is, folks. We made it through 40 films, and we're inching closer to number one. These are my top 10 favorite films. Number 10, Beverly Hills Cop. Eddie Murphy plays Axel Foley, a Detroit cop whose friend with mob ties gets bumped off when he comes to visit from Bever Beverly Hills. Foley isn't allowed to work on the case, so he goes to the hills to investigate. There he's picked up and trailed by the Beverly Hills police, and uses his street cop tactics to pick up the case. This movie topped out the box office in 1984, even beating out Ghostbusters. This is the best cop movie of the 80s. Originally intended to star Sly Stallone, who used his ideas for Cobra, Eddie Murphy is awesome as Axel Foley. He's fast speaking, fast thinking, and funny as hell. But what really makes the movie are the supporting roles of John Ashton as Sergeant Taggart and Judge Reinhold as Detective Billy Rosewood. Almost like Abbott and Costello or Laurel and Hardy of the 80s, these two make the movie in back of Murphy's awesome lead. Beverly Hills Cop was an awesome movie then, and it still is now, followed by a just as amazing sequel, and one that's not so much. Plus there's that catchy synth theme, by, theme song by Harold Faltermeyer and an amazing soundtrack. The perfect word for this movie is amazing. Number 9, Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call? Well, you know. Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and Harold Ramis play three scientists who are pulled together enough funding to start a company of catching paranormal entities throughout the Big Apple. What more can you say? It's Ghostbusters. One of the quintessential films and items of pop culture for our country, Ghostbusters peaked out in the second place at the box office in 1984, just after the aforementioned Beverly Hills Cop. The trio, the trio of leads are hilarious in their roles, and Rick Moranis is awesome as a super nerdy tenant in an apartment building. And who can forget that theme song that topped out the charts as well? This is one of those movies that every American needs to see. Number 8, The Back to the Future Trilogy. There is no way to only include just one of these films. These are the adventures of teenager Marty McFly, played by Michael J. Fox and Dr. Emmett Brown, played by Christopher Lloyd. Brown invents a time machine out of a DeLorean, and it continues from there. It's physically impossible to not like these movies. The acting is great and the writing is superb. Part 1 sees Marty getting lost in 1955. Part 2 shows him having to go to 2015, back to 1985, and back to 1955. And the third part has him going to back to 19, 1885. These films can get a little confusing, but if you stick with it, you'll fall in love with the story and characters. Once again, this is a highlight of the 80s, but it still holds up great today. Alan Silvestri provides some of the greatest musical scores in existence, and director Robert Rodriguez gives us three of the greatest films ever made. Number 7, Reservoir Dogs. In Quentin Tarantino's classic, we are identified with seven men. They are all given aliases and are scheduled to rob a jewelry store. However, someone is a rat in the pack and the job goes horrible, horribly awry. Three men escape to the drop spot, and they're questioning, le left questioning who to trust. The film's plot is relatively simple, but in good old Tarantino fashion, it's shot with plot twists and written out of chronological order. Harvey Keitel stars as Mr. White and does a darn good job in it. Other notable mentions are Tim Roth as Mr. Orange, Michael Madsen as Mr. Blonde, Steve Buscemi as Mr. Pink, and Terry T Tarantino himself as Mr. Brown. Dark, gritty, humorous, and stylish, Reservoir Dogs is a gangster movie that's one of a kind. Number 6, Inception. In this Christopher Nolan sci-fi epic, Leonardo DiCaprio plays Dom Cobb, a specialized spy who is trained to enter in the subconscious mind of a target through their dreams. Now that's really all I can say without giving everything away, because this is a really deep and confusing movie. But once you get sucked in, you'll find how incredibly interesting it is. DiCaprio does a great job as Cobb at doing anything for his mission but hiding secrets that could jeopardize it. Loaded with great cinematography and special effects, plus awesome music by Hans Zimmer, you'll be remembering Inception and be questioning if reality is nothing but a dream. Number 5, Dirty Harry. Clint Eastwood steps into his iconic role as bad boy cop Dirty Harry Callahan. When a sadistic sniper threatens the city of San Francisco, Callahan is put on the case, and will get results at any cost. This is the film that perfected the police film genre. 
Eastwood is amazing as Dirty Harry, being as almost as cold and unfeeling as the killer he's hunting. Andy Robinson plays the sniper, and he gives us a haunting and psychotic performance. Everything about this film is legendary. The famous Do I Feel Lucky speech is still used in pop culture to this day, and the camera work in the torture scene on the football field is phenomenal. It spawned four sequels, each one making a landmark for the franchise. Well written and filmed with such expertise, Dirty Harry is essential in cinema's history. Number 4, A Clockwork Orange. To quote the film's tagline, being the adventures of a young man whose principal interests are rape, ultraviolence, and Beethoven. Malcolm McDowell plays a Alex, a, th a thuggish yet sophisticated teenager who prowls through the night with his droogs, performing brutal acts of violence. Until Al Alex is imprisoned, then his life is turned around. Based on, based on the classic and ultra-controversial novel by Anthony Burgess, Stanley Kubrick directs this classic and ultra-controversial film adaptation. Malcolm McDowell, Malcolm McDowell is fantastic as Alex, with his trademark sinister smile, one of the inspirations for Heath Ledger's Joker, you know that he means business. This is also the closest film adaptation I've ever seen. The camera work is brilliant. From the opening shot, shot of Alex grinning in the Corova milk bar, to the slow motion stroll alongside the river with Alex and his droogs, Kubrick's visionary genius is written all over it. The great acting makes the film all the more brilliant. Like the trailer says, shocking, satirical, violent, political, Beethovenic, clockwork orange, classic. Number 3, Die Hard. Bruce Willis plays NYC cop John McClane, who goes to Los Angeles to visit his estranged wife, Holly, played by Bonnie Bedalia, at a Christmas party at her corporation. While washing up, a group of 12 terrorists apprehend the building and take 30 or so hostages. McClane escapes with his service pistol, and it's apparent he may have to be a hero, whether he wants to or not. The acting is perfect, and the writing is superb. Bruce Willis does a great job as John McClane and gives the film numerous memorable quotes. Alan Rickman is sinister as always as the terrorist leader Hans Gruber. The action scenes are top-notch and high-wire. Suspenseful and humorous, Die Hard is the jolliest action movie of the holiday season. Number 2, Rocky. Just about everyone knows what this movie is about. Rocky Balboa, played by Sylvester Stallone, is a down-on-this-luck man who lives for two things. Boxing and the lady that works at the pet shop, Adrian, played by Talia Shire. When the heavyweight champion of the world, Apollo Creed, played by Carl Weathers, offers Rocky a chance at the title, Rocky accepts, and history is made. This is the definition of a feel-good movie. The characters are lovable and believable, and you feel the joy and pain that they feel. Stallone's screenplay is ideal, not only providing us with a sports drama, but with a solid romance base. Burgess Meredith plays Mickey, Rocky's trainer, and he's awesome. Burt Young plays Adrian's alcoholic brother, Polly, and he's one of the best characters in the film. It all leads to the famous theme song by Bill Conti put to the perfect training montage, with Rocky running up the steps to the art museum. And no matter what the outcome of the fight is, you'll feel good. Rocky won three Oscars and, followed by, and was followed by five sequels, but none of them match the caliber as this one. Definitely Stallone's best. And my number one favorite movie is Pulp Fiction. In this Quentin Tarantino masterpiece, three stories are told out of chronological order, but all intertwining. Vincent Vega, played by John Travolta, has to take the mob boss's girl, out, played by Uma Thurman, out to dinner. A boxer, played by Bruce Willis, wins a fixed fight and is on the run. And Vega and his partner Jules, played by Samuel L. Jackson, have to clean up an accidental murder. Tarantino started his style with Reservoir Dogs, but perfected it with Pulp Fiction. Everything is 100% perfect. The acting is phenomenal, and Travolta and Jackson exchange some of the funniest and most memorable dialogue in cinematic history. Bruce Willis is great as always, and Harvey Keitel, Tim Roth, Christopher Walken and Tarantino also have great supporting roles as well. It's amazing how perfect this movie is. The cinematography and music is iconic, and how each story ties into the others is just pitch perfect. Hilarious, gritty, violent, exciting, and memorable. Pulp Fiction launched the career of Tarantino and even drew full attention to Reservoir Dogs. Pulp Fiction. Nothing more to say other than perfect.